the WBA and the WBC uh, heavyweight champion in the moment, and Michael Spinks is going to fight Jerry Cooney. Now, Jerry Cooney has uh, a, a remarkable record, considering he's been in and out. He's retired a couple of times, but they are both with us, along with the manager of Michael Spinks, Butch Lewis, who is also going to be promoting this fight, I understand, Butch? That's right, right. Okay, so let's say hello to Michael Spinks. Gold medal from Montreal. That's how I like to remember him. And Jerry Cooney. Uh, we originally had lined this up, and Butch suggested that maybe we separate the two of you. Now, is it really that is it really that sort of thing even before a fight uh, develops? Michael? Not, not really. It, it, it's, it's just, uh, it's just a lot of Hello. tension that's. Uh, that, don't do it right. Don't hit me. Don't yeah. hit me. It, it's just a lot of tension that we're we're under and, and a little stress that we're dealing with. It, it's it's not a thing where, where I think we hate one another. It's just that it's the fact that we have to get in the ring and fight one another. It builds a lot of tension and we carry it around, especially when we're in one another's presence. I guess you have to do that. I mean, really, well, the scratch his eyes out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> scratch his eyes out. <laughs> you are big. Really, Jerry. Uh, what, six, seven, 230 pounds? I weigh 240 pounds right now. 240, but you'll be down to around about 232 or something like Michael, you are what now, about 200? Uh, about 200 pounds. All right, let's go back and maybe recap just a little bit. Uh, Michael, uh, I first met in 1976, Montreal. Uh, middleweight gold medalist. Uh, your uh, brother, of course, also a medalist in uh, Montreal. Uh, uh, he was the one that really sort of rocketed to the top. And yes, we're talking yes. about Leon. And, yes. of course, Leon beating Ali and then losing the heavyweight title back to him. And then all of a sudden, Michael just kept moving along, became the light heavyweight champion, just kind of quietly while no one was watching. And then all of a sudden, uh, he took on somebody named Larry Holmes. And he beat Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes was stunned, came back, you beat him again. Uh, it's just kind of amazing what has happened to your career. During that shadow part of it, when you were in the shadow of your brother, what were your thoughts? Were you confident you could go ahead and do oh, it? I, I was confident that I had a turn, and as long as I was still alive, that I knew that my turn would come, that I, I would have a chance to see exactly what I was able to do in the boxing ring, and if I was going to grow or, you know, or anything like that. But I knew it would take time. Leon was a fast learner. Leon learned fast in St. Louis. It took me a long time to really learn how to, I mean, it's even when even. I lost a few years in a row, which discouraged me a, whole, a lot. And I just kept at it. I kept at but it. But never as a professional? Not as a professional. Yeah. <laughs> it's been really a remarkable record. And, uh, and now you're right there with the big bucks there, talking to Butch that this fight's going to generate something like, uh, what, uh, $20 million, something like that? Well, <clears throat> right now, two? Frank, uh, Tickets went on sale officially today for the June 15th fight, and uh, we had almost a million dollars in the box office already. The closed circuit exhibitors, uh, a lot of them flew in yesterday, putting down their money to have it closed circuit all, all around the world. And uh, right now, we project a minimum of 20 to 25 million, uh, and hopefully, yeah. it will uh, go up as high as maybe 30 to 50 million, where the fighters, of course, will make better than their well, guarantees of Michael getting seven million, Jerry getting five million. Come so, right uh, behind Leonard and Hagler, you have to think that way, don't you? That's right. Jerry, let's go back and recap a little bit with you. Uh, you've been up and down. Uh, uh, you also had your opportunity. Uh, you went up against Larry Holmes. Uh, you you had him in the early going, and I, I don't think... don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't cry, Ryder, don't you're a big man. <laughs> but you did, you had him in the early going, and then you lost in the 13th well, round, and then think... you retired. What happened was his lack of experience. I was more concerned about going the distance in the fight than just going out and fight. I, I heard him throughout the fight, but I just wanted to make sure I go the distance. Uh, we've been talking about this fight for 18 months, and um, we were having some problems with HBO and Time Life and Don King, who's, who's been kind of monopolizing on the heavyweight division. And I'm so happy that the fight's finally taking place. We've been training for 18 months off and on. Um, I fought the number three ranked heavyweight contender last May on ABC and knocked him out in the first round. And so you're feeling strong, you're feeling confident. Oh, I feel great. Just every time you, they set a rule and you, you know, you do what you have to do, they change the rules yeah. on you. So, you know, Jerry, you, you've been an enigma, though, because everyone thought when you came up, six foot seven, 230 pounds, and can punch you, have a left hook, maybe as, as good as anyone's ever thrown one. You've taken out, I don't know how many opponents in the first round with that hook. Uh, and then you'd come in, you'd fight for a while, then you'd disappear, you'd uh, be hanging around clubs and having a good time, and then, then you'd come back and you'd make another spurt. And, uh, and it, the question always seemed to be, does Jerry Cooney 
really want this bad enough? Well, Frank, the best way I can explain it is um, uh, the boxing business, um, if, you, if you look back 40 years ago, the boxing business has been run by, by um, people who don't really care much about the, the fighters themselves. And Be specific, who are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about uh, the Don Kings of boxing, the different promoters in boxing. Uh, they don't care about the fighter themselves, and they just want to have a monopoly on a division so they can tie it up. I have always remained a free fighter, um, not under contract with anybody. And, and being a free fighter, it's difficult for you to get a fight, because if I were to win the title, then that would put him... him but you wouldn't be winning a title against Michael Spinks. You, but you would be maybe a people's title, because Michael's undefeated. His title, the IBF, was stripped from him. Frank, I, I just put it this way. Uh, Michael Spinks beat Larry Holmes uh, twice. Larry Holmes beat the Trevor Burbix, the Bone Crusher Smiths. Uh, Michael Spinks is the heavyweight champion of the world, no matter what they say. And Jerry Cooney's mine. Um, you got to lose he, it in the ring, in other words. Yes. And um, I think people recognize that, and people understand that boxing isn't um, as football or baseball is. Um, it's not, it's been in the dark ages and it needs yeah. to change. We've had a lot of our guys try it. They had two tall Jones, mm -hmm. bigger than you. Ed mm -hmm. went up there 6'10 and he got in there and almost yeah. got killed. Mm -hmm. A better example is the fight just recent, the Leonard Hagler fight, mm -hmm. where in anyone in their right mind would not question if Marvin Hagler was the middleweight champion of the world. Yeah, no matter what it was said. And, and, but two of the organizations did not recognize mm -hmm. the fight. As of this week, another organization has stripped Ray Leonard, who just beat Marvin Hagler. So it's based around a lot of well, politics. Maybe that's what Jerry is saying. The, the people who are really behind the scenes have really have changed, and really it's a people's decision. Let me, let me ask both of you one question. There's a guy out there hovering around a kid, Michael Tyson. Uh, People have said, Michael, that, that you didn't want to fight him. That's why you chose to take the fight with Cooney and refuse to fight the number one contender. Uh, we just have a short time, but give me an appraisal of Michael Tyson. Is he as great as we think he's going to be? I couldn't tell you that. I think he's a hard puncher. You want him, though, sometime down the line. I, I, uh, I, uh, if Butch make the fight, I'll fight Tyson. But uh, I'm not afraid of anybody, Frank. Well, I, you couldn't be. I know I that. Wouldn't dare I wouldn't I just like to say that... Um, yeah. <laughs> Jerry? That in my career, I've always had the most success against fighters that come at me. Um, Tyson's a very strong uh, young young guy coming up. I think a lot of him, I met him when he was 14 years old. He's big now as he was then. And um, I think that Michael Spinks is a more difficult fight than a, a Tyson fight. Tyson comes at you. He's right there in front of you. Yeah. Well, we know Michael doesn't do that. Uh, Dennis Rappaport, your manager's out in the audience. So, Jerry, yes. couldn't you take a shot of uh, Dennis, who probably is very involved in this fight. Uh, your thoughts, Dennis, about what Jerry said earlier, about the people who really are controlling boxing today. Well, well Frank, I think the biggest disgrace of the politics of boxing, you have these self-appointed organizations that make arbitrary and capricious decisions, and they don't really consider the fighter. It's, it's what the people perceive that's yeah. important. We wish we could have got to you earlier. Thanks for being with us, uh, all of you. Good luck. The 15th. The 15th. I think we have a very